There are a lot of videos out there on Delta Printer bed leveling. In this one, I'll show you how I do it and hopefully save you some time. A Delta Printer is leveled somewhat differently than a standard Cartesian style printer. On a square bed, you can usually just disable the snapper motors, move the hot end and the bed to the corners, check it, adjust it, and call it a day. On a Delta Printer, you need a set of coordinates to move the hot end to before you can check the level, usually in front of each upright. There's a couple things you need to worry about when leveling a Delta. The distance between the end stops and the print bed, all the factors that equal up to be the radius of the Delta, and ultimately the bed level. In this video, I'll be using the any cubic delta, but this will be close for pretty much any delta. First things first, let's set a rough delta height for this printer. Before you do this, I am assuming that your end stops are nice and tight, and your upright holders are firmly on the extrusion but moving freely. Now connect your printer up USB, we're going to need to get into Marlin and make a few adjustments, and we'll control the whole thing with Pronterface to make this easier. I am using Marlin 1.1.3 for this process but most of the current Marlin versions should be very similar. The first thing I recommend doing is disabling minimum software end stops. Just put a comment in front of that line. This will allow us to go into the negative past zero if we need to. When going into the negative, it can allow your hot end to crash into your bed. So go slow and be careful. Also, comment out Z safe homing. This will allow your delta to go all the way to the end stops and stay there. During the calibration, we're also going to want to enable EEPROM settings, so remove the comment from that line. This will allow us to save some of these settings with a command and make things go faster. Make sure you're on the right COM port and board, and hit upload. Now we'll open up Pronterface, make sure you have the right COM port and the right speed, the speed can be found in Marlin, and click connect. Before we get started, let's make sure EEPROM has been cleared out and set to default values. Enter an M502 command. That loads whatever the settings are in Marlin. And then an M500 command will save those settings and write it to EEPROM. Now we'll enter a G28 to home the printer. And we'll start bringing the print head down to the bed slowly with G1 commands. Let's start with G1, Z100. If that looks good, let's move to G1, Z50. G1, Z40, 20, 10. From here, move your print head down slowly until it just touches two pieces of paper. M114 to see the location. If your Z setting is at a positive value, that means your delta height needs to be smaller. If your Z setting is at a negative value, that means your height needs to be greater. Mine needs to be smaller, 7 tenths of a millimeter. Currently in Marlin, the delta height is set to 334.1. With the M665 command, we will adjust it in EEPROM temporarily with H333.4. This will remove the 7 tenths from the delta height. M503 once again to make sure the setting has changed. G28 to rehome. G1, Z10. From here, we'll move down slowly again to make sure we don't crash into the bed. We're at zero, and that feels pretty good. You're happy with your Z height settings, M503 to check them again to make sure they haven't changed, and M500 to store them temporarily in EEPROM. This setting will change as we calibrate the radius, but this is a good rough setting for now. For bed leveling, a lot of these printers use a stationary bed that can't be adjusted. If you can adjust your bed, just try to get it as level with the frame as possible. Remember, you're leveling to the printer, not to the plane that you're working on. If you can't adjust your bed, no worries, we'll make up for this on the end stop side. Now we're going to do the rather tedious process of leveling the print head in front of each tower. We're going to be checking the level of the print head in front of each tower, but for this we need a set of coordinates on where to move to to get to each tower. I'm using the coordinates given from the AnyCubic Castle video. To make this a more repeatable process, I'm going to set up some quick buttons in Pronterface. Tower 1 will move with G1 to X0, Y60, Z0, a feed rate of 5000. Tower 2 We'll move with G1 to X negative 52, Y negative 30, Z0, feed rate 5000. Tower 3, we'll move with G1 to X52, Y negative 30, Z0, feed rate 5000. I'm also going to throw a button in there to go to 0. G1, X0, Y0, Z0, feed rate 5000. Now we'll home the printer, and let's move to the first tower location. On this printer, they give you adjustment screws to set the height at the top of the carriage. 
Some printers, you'll have to move the end stop up and down to set this setting. You can also use the M666 commands to set an offset. We'll look at that in a minute. For now, we're just going to use the adjustment screws provided. Check the first tower height with a piece of paper. If it's too loose, you need to adjust the screw and make the path longer. If it's too tight, you need to tighten the screw and make the path shorter. After you make your screw adjustments, rehome and check it again. After you have the first tower feeling like where it should be, rehome and let's move to the second tower. Same with the second tower. If you need to make adjustments, use your screw or move your end stop, whatever you have. The point is to get all three towers to feel the same. If you need to make adjustments to the second tower, then you'll need to go back and check the first tower again. You can't move on to the next tower until the first tower is correct. If everything is good with the first and second tower, we can move on to the third tower. Rehome and move to the third tower. Check the third tower with your piece of paper. Again, if it's too tight, make the screw shorter. If it's too loose, make the screw longer. I can't stress this enough. If you make adjustments to the third tower, you need to go back and check the second tower and the first tower over again. All these need to be equal. If you're happy with these settings, rehome and we can move on to the next step. If your carriages aren't adjustable and you can't move your end stops, you can use the M666 command to set end stop offsets. Do an M503 to check what the offsets are currently set at. These are the end stop offsets. And then use the M666 command to set the offset. If your X tower needed to be one millimeter lower, you'd enter X negative one, Y zero, Z zero. Check it with M503. Free home and then move to your X tower location. In our case, it's tower two. That has moved the print head one millimeter closer to the bed, which is too tight for my configuration, but this is just an example. Note, if you need to get further away from the print surface, you'll have to make a positive value with the M666 command. But also note that this will adjust your delta height automatically. If we did M666 X2 Y0 Z0, checked it with M503, you'll notice that the bed height has actually changed that amount. It's compensating for the movement of the delta. We're not going to use the offset process to level this printer, but if you need to, it's there. Make sure to save your commands with the M500 after you've made adjustments. After all your tower heights look good and they're equal, we can move on to setting the radius of the printer. This is what can make your parts look convexed or concaved on the bottom. It's easiest just to start a large circular print and adjust it on the fly. Let's go back to home and we'll load a test print file. I'm using this large circle that I've scaled up to 300%. I'll link it in the description. The circle will allow you to see what's going on in the print service much easier. Go ahead and start the print. Use the M503 command to check what your current radius is. Ours is 97.8. If there's large gaps in between the filament and the outside print lines aren't sticking to the bed, your radius is probably too low. Use M665R to change the radius. Our default radius is 97.8. We'll move to 97.9. Use small increments when changing this. You can already see the gaps in the lines have gotten smaller. The radius probably isn't quite high enough, but you don't want to go too high. For example, if we made this 98.9, you can see the print lines are getting really smashed into the bed, especially in the center. The print's almost translucent. Let's back off to 97.95. At this point, the print lines look pretty even, but they might not be close enough to the print bed. So you may need to make height adjustments on the fly as well. You can use the M665H command to run up or down if needed. We're currently at height 333.4. I'm going to increase my height to 334.1. You can see the lines are starting to stick well with the right amount of squish. The center of the print is starting to look a little too squished, so I'm going to make one final radius adjustment of 97.93. You can see how the print is smoothed out. When you're happy with your radius settings, you can turn off the print and save the settings into EEPROM with M500. Come again with M503. These are your new height and radius settings.
On the second test print, I ended up making a radius adjustment to 97.975. Everything looks pretty smooth. You can stop the test print and let's move on to making these settings permanent in Marlin. Remember, if you want to continue testing, save your current settings with M500. I recommend always checking with M503. In Marlin, setting your delta height is no big deal. You can just punch in the value. But setting the radius is actually a math problem. It's a few parameters minus each other that comes up with the radius value. So we'll start by entering the printer height. We ended up with 334.1. As you can see, the delta radius is made up from delta smooth rod offset minus delta effector offset minus delta carriage offset. So we really only need to change one of these values to get our delta radius set correctly. I'm going to opt to change the delta smooth rod offset. Since our radius was 97.8 before, and it's 97.97 now, I'm going to increase the smooth rod offset from 151.4 to 151.57. After you've made these settings and you're happy with the calibration, I recommend removing the comment from minimum software end stops just to be safe. Remove the comment from Z safe homing, and if you're not using your EEPROM settings, comment that out. Mind you, this will wipe out any of the M665 or M666 commands you used, but they should now be saved in Marlin. Let's re-upload. So there you go. I hope your delta is running well and your prints are turning out great. I know this is a very tedious process, but I hope the buttons and the commands I use make this a little easier. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, leave it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and thanks for watching.